The following program is paid for by the Charlie Butler team. Looking for tips on selling your home? Tune into the Charlie Butler Show right here on WGBF AM every Sunday at 9 a.m. The Charlie Butler Show where your questions get answers. Charlie guarantees it. Good Sunday morning, Tri-State. This is the Charlie Butler Real Estate Show. I'm here with my cast of mi- misfits. You know. It's the land of misfit toys. <laughs> That's Thank you, Mindy. That was Mindy Woodward doing sound effects for us. Wah, yeah. wah, wah. <laughs> As always, to my left, Churchill Mortgage, the district manager, is uh, David Crow. Good morning, David. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, everybody. Happy to be here. On the very end, I just don't know what to say about it. I can, you know what? I can't think of anything just to give you a hard time about. She's so sweet. Oh, you can't. That's a first for you, Charlie. Are you feeling yeah, okay? I know. I, I know. I know. That's one oh, of his... We're giving him a COVID oh, test I, after I think this. one day he said, I would rather pick on Candace than it, breathe or eat no, or... I, I'd, I would rather pick on you than eat when I'm hungry. Yep, that's, that's it. it. That's that's the one. Yeah. yeah. And although... How do we always end up with people that like picking on us? I don't, I don't know. understand. I don't know. Oh, I don't although get although it. Jordan took some excellent pictures of Candace. No. And for... That will go on social media. <laughs> they... And that... <laughs> No, I, I, that was a, I was, yeah, that, you stammering. believe that. <laughs> Jordan, I have, I have definitely defended you whenever Charlie has harassed you about things. So whenever you catch someone with a bad look on their face because they weren't prepared for a picture to be taken, blackmail. You delete it. <laughs> exactly. Hang on, I'd hang on that picture while you're Blackmail. And, you know, Candace uh, just used her mom voice. Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. Sounds like she's, sounds you like go to your room. Sounds like she's talking to Trevor on our team. Uh, yeah. Yes. All of a sudden, oh. she doesn't sound 29. I, I, <laughs> watch it, David. <laughs> someone, someone who doesn't have a problem doing their hair is, uh, in fact, she's kind of had the headband today. No, I'm doing the Rosie the Riveter thing today. So uh, that yep. is Mindy. That's Mindy Woodward, and Mindy and I have worked together for 25 years, and I remember 20 some years ago, Mindy got her hair real short. Yeah. So I was going through a breakup. Oh, and oh no. <laughs> I had this great idea that I was going to shave my head because I've always wanted to shave my head. And I had a pair of clippers. So I went into the bathroom and I took a little bit off the side. And I was like, well, you know what? If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I took the clippers straight down the middle of my head. She did. And I just shaved it off. Ball, she was bald as a Military keyboard. style. Yes, oh. I sure she, did. She was bald as a keyboard. She So she comes in. The next day, I had no idea she was doing it. Well, I didn't really tell a whole bunch yeah. of people. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think you told anybody. No, I was so, like, surprise! And hey! so she walks to my office, and I try to act as, as Like you didn't notice. Like it's <laughs> um, Hi, Mindy. Uh, uh, Did you, you do have something a bad night? Did you <laughs> like, what the heck happened? Yeah. And my office manager was like, very sweet lady, and Kathy Masterson. And, and Kathy go. Oh, you think Mindy's got some something going on? She would do something like that? I don't know, Kathy. I just really don't. <laughs> hey, it was a thing. I tried it. It was super cool, and I had a lot of very handsome guys want to rub my head. There you go. So, oh, you know, worked out very well, as, especially as, post breakup. I mean, post breakup, yes. it was like, yes, you can. Come yes, here. you can, pet me. <laughs> I've looked up that when going through a breakup, at least six months before I cut bangs. So I can't imagine <laughs> I know, shaving yeah, my head. I understand that. I've <laughs> like, cut my oh own bags too, and that's not Oh, good. it's bad. So, remember Emil Phillips? Yeah. I did that once. <laughs> so we we have we have news. We haven't talked to our we didn't talk to our producer Jordan last week, and Jordan Rose is over here. Oh, by the way, that was Mindy Woodward. You heard from. Good morning, Mindy. Good morning. <laughs> and uh, by the way, <laughs> Jordan, Jordan Jordan has Jordan. You got promoted. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a promotion. So uh, I will be moving on from production director here and moving over into continuity side and and keep it on moving, uh, moving on over to Illinois as well. Um, I take it somewhere in, up in the Breeze area? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah right what in Clinton sh- County. What a shock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, his, his girlfriend is, is from around Breeze. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> and so how, how close will you be to her? We'll, we'll be living together. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the game plan. Jordan, you're going to live in sin? Yes, I am. <laughs> I pray for forgiveness. <laughs> He'd rather do that than ask for permission. So <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, forgiveness over permission. I got gotcha. you. Exactly. <laughs> the, uh, um, so w- when is this happening? Uh, hopefully before the end of the year. It's kind of a toss-up situation of the now. Mindy's already been in my house and seen the pigsty that I live in. So she's already... <laughs> I, now I, now. With indoor plumbing. 
With I mean, it does have indoor plumbing, yeah. and I know this will shock you. Jordan has a lot of rock memorabilia. A lot. Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> Like almost hoarder status, a lot, a lot of <laughs> music memorabilia. That so I, I know, I know, Mindy told you to uh, declutter a little bit. Of you being oh green. yeah, I've already been packing and everything. You're I packing have, up. So. I have seven boxes of Funko Pops. Uh, I have four <laughs> big, medium sized boxes of CDs. Yeah, Funko Pops are those like little bubble head toys. Okay. That yeah. Every, yeah, I, I like the pop culture dolls. They have different ones of yeah. like musicians and actors and the, characters from the car- the Listen, the I have mom hair, so I don't know about yes. pop culture. Yes. <laughs> I'll quit talking to that modern day slang. <laughs> right. <laughs> the Cardinals did a promotion one, one time and they gave away Yachty or Molina. Yeah. Yep. Funko Pop. Uh-huh. Okay, so they, they had like um, silver, gold, and platinum. Okay. And they go for expensive money. My wife, I get just the regular Funko Pop. My wife, when she walks in, gets a platinum. Oh. There are people, there were people coming up to us in Target. Uh, she was offered $500 for it several <laughs> times. Did yeah. she sell? Wow. No, she nope. should. It, she held on to it. She held on to it. <laughs> And they're not, I don't think they're ads, I think they're still like $300. So there's there's three different sets of King Griffey Jr. ones just like that. Yeah. And the platinum for King Griffey Jr. one is selling for about twenty to $25,000 right now. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. That was only, I think that was only like 20 made. Yeah. Well, and that's the only time they that they did that giveaway. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. It was planned again, and then it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so this may be your last show. Uh, I'll be, I'll probably be out of here around October and then we'll introduce the new dude coming in. So you'll do the next one probably. Yeah, I'll probably do, I'll probably do the next few at least until the beginning of October and then we'll have a, a new voice in here to annoy you. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hopefully someone with a good sense of humor and it will take advice better than you do. I doubt it. I doubt it. I want to tell him to be as difficult as possible. Um, You take advice by as well as Candace. (laughs) He probably orders his groceries to be delivered. Yeah. No, uh, I pick them up. Oh, oh yeah, wait, I at least see? pick them up. But you don't go in the store. But I do not go in the store. No, I at least go pick Jordan. them up. Jordan. So just go ahead and have them dropped off on your doorstep. That's that's still that's extra money on there. I may as well just drive there and get it and go back. And and Jordan, you know, you could meet people in the store. I know you don't you, you're not in sales, but Candace, for example, who who doesn't who who does does not go to the grocery store. She she does all, she passes up all those opportunities. She's a salesperson. Grocery store Candace is not a pleasant Candace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Grocery, <laughs> store, grocery store Candace is in a hurry. She's usually hungry. <laughs> same same with me. I put headphones in and I ignore yeah. everyone who tries to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I smile. I, I smile at everybody. Okay. I, 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 I know. <laughs> me too. Yeah, we do not. I do. I have a very pleasant demeanor. Why can I, I not see Charlie in a grocery store? Well, I'm not saying it happens that often, but you know, I, when I do. I, that's exactly I wanna, right. I want to I mean, see Charlie cook a meal. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I, I can do that. I want to see you cook, throw Charlie? down in I the can kitchen. Cook some, yeah. Grilled cheese. Uh, no, I can't actually cook. <laughs> hey, okay, what's your favorite you know. meal to cook? If you're going to cook a meal for your family, cook. what are you going to cook for them? Oh, gosh. I mean, I would probably, my favorite meal, I'd grill steaks. Oh, well, yeah, that, well, that's I easy. Know. Every guy knows how to grill a steak. Well, not every guy. I like, not I'd, every guy. This is, <laughs> this is nothing fancy, but there's a hamburger casserole recipe that we have that I, I, I like making. And you make that. I, I, well, you yeah. cook more than I do then. Yeah. See, I grill, but I've had a stove in my, heaven that don't really work for I about air four fry. years. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, air air fry. Fry. I do a lot of air well. frying. I will lie. I just cooked uh, dinner. And it consisted of lobster tails, snow crab legs, baked potato, and bread. Okay, you're making way too much. And we didn't get an invite. I grill lobster tails, and I'm just saying whether it's Sam's Club, it's Kroger's, you can buy them inexpensively. Snow crabs were Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. I learned how to bake those in there with spices, oils, and and drum butter, and bake those in the oven, throw the lobster Four minutes on each side, pull the meat and baked potato and bread. And I was looking at dinner and thinking, gosh, if I was in a nice restaurant, how much would I be paying yep. for lobster tails mm-hmm. and crab legs right yep. now? <laughs> exactly. It would just say yeah. market price on the Oh, it would just say market, price. absolutely. Oh, it's so so it would, it's really not that expensive when you cook it at home. Uh, I'll just say it that. It is a lot less expensive. Yeah. 
So, Jordan, I, with you moving in with your girlfriend, you probably need my assistance at this point, right? Not, not yet, no, not yet. No? <laughs> Don't just run into Shane Company up there and, and buy something. I was just going to run into Walmart. They have that little pyramid of rings <laughs> right there. <laughs> Please talk to Charlie before you do that. <laughs> do you know, I, in all seriousness, and I, I've been out of I've been out of jewelry for tw- over 25 years, but at, the, at that time, Walmart sold more jewelry than anybody in the United States. Really? Yes, I didn't I mean, even know that they had they real do. jewelry They've until got, recently. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And it is, uh, but they sold billions and billions of dollars worth of jewelry. They makes were, sense. They were by far hmm. the biggest. I can't say for Evansville, but I know just walking in some of the other Costco's and bigger stores like Brentwood and Nashville and stuff, uh, they've got a huge jewelry selection. And they'll have massive diamonds there, like massive price yeah. tags on, on those things. That's what catches my eye. I'm like, oh, $25,000 at Costco. So... And the thing, and I well, it, at least you get a dollar fifty hot dogs, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and a drink, and a drink. <laughs> this is probably hard to explain on, on the radio, but those diamonds, we would order. You know, if somebody wants somebody wants something very specific, big stone, mm-hmm. certain clarity, certain color. So we would order those from a diamond house. We had a lot of business in the diamond district in Chicago, so either there or New York, and they come in, and they'd send you three or four in a little blue paper that you just fit in your pocket, and you unfold it. And it's those diamonds are, you know, it's very, you know, you're careful with them. But there have been many times I've, I've had I've had over $100,000 worth of diamonds in my pocket and walked out with them and, walk, and went home, you know. Wow. And, yeah. uh, Threw it in the laundry. Yeah, no, I know. I never was that, you know, but I have. But uh, where'd that shirt go? They would they would do they they'd do inventory. They'd come up and I was bad about from case to case. I'd have something. Stick it in my pocket if they still wanted it. Mm. And keep those hands out there, there and keep and, it. And, yeah. they say, and they said, hey, Charlie, check your, you know, they knew I was. They said, check your sports coat in, in your suits. I th- you know, we got certain amount We're of We're missing diamonds. some inventory. You know, We're missing 100 grand in diamonds. <laughs> no, but they, but they would. They'd be missing a few thousand dollars worth. It would just uh-huh. be in my pocket for, for weeks. You know. Yeah. But uh, no, those, uh, those diamonds come in loose. You handle them with tweezers. Yeah. You know, but call it on TV. You know how some people carry around those like gemstones and everything? Charlie carries around diamonds, uh, diamonds. to make, yeah. diamonds to make his life feel better. <laughs> and you know, that was, and I don't know if it's still this way, but that was an unusual business. When I started my own wholesale company and you would go to these big shows in Atlanta or we went, usually went to one in Atlanta and you'd buy hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 worth of, of merchandise. Mm-hmm. This was your contract. You shook hands. You've shared that with me before. Yeah. Yeah. I think in that industry, the, the Jewish, you know, it's heavily. You know, I, I'm not being racist nope. at all, but it's heavily Jewish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why when you said you had, I didn't want you losing a hundred grand to those guys up in New York. No, and, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no we sent them a lot of money. You know, yeah, but you never handled those with your finger because, especially if you had a client. I think I, I had a guy that uh, spent forty three thousand dollars on his on his his diamond. So yeah, that's why I told you be nice to everybody because I saw him. I met him. In, at the urinal at Robert Stadium. Oh I, I'm, I'm just, are you picturing how this went down? <laughs> I mean, it's, if it's a Charlie story, my brain just goes in so many That's different directions. That's a nice diamond over there. <laughs> it's it's like, like, no, I had, so, I, I, where'd you buy that at? I made it, I had done business with him before. I hadn't seen him in years, though. Uh-huh. And, but, but the thing is, if you even, if you touch him with your finger and it's like a certified stone, you'll change the color or the Diamonds? clarity of diamond. By, just by touching it with your finger, you change the color or the clarity. So I wear this my diamond necklace all right. the time. So when I t- and I touch it because I don't I don't shower with it. If on somebody, if, like that, if you but, went to get it graded and you uh-huh. touched it, you you would probably lose one grade off of, off of that. In, in the clarity, in the, in the clarity. even if it's been washed up or no, no. But I'm saying so but, it washes off. Yeah, it washes happens. off. It, it okay. So, but uh, Mr. Clean and Water is the best okay. thing. <laughs> It huh. really is. I never knew that. We we, used, we uh, tell us we always did. People think we use some fancy jewelry cleaner in the mm-hmm. in the back there. Mister Cleaning Water was That's was funny. better than any jewelry cleaner ever sold. I did, but not know that. Uh, but so Jor- Jordan, you're picking up all these tips now. This should be easy now for you. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got, I think I'm going to be all right. You have not taken one note since I've been talking about that. <laughs> it's, all, it's all mental. It's all, it's all mental. You no, are mental, like, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah, your I've girlfriend know how mental you are? <laughs> oh, trust me, well, she does. She's going to find out. They're going to live together. Yeah, I need yeah. to know that beforehand. Well, I'm sure you'll have separate bedrooms, though. 
Yeah, yeah, we will. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I already got my main cave lined out and everything else. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I have so much. I have so much. Like Mindy was saying, I have so much <laughs> of just of posters that are autographed in drumsticks and drum heads and everything autographed by bands and everything else throughout the decades I've been going to music festivals and concerts. Yeah. I just got to figure out how to pack all of it. And of course, it's like. He's got the album that's signed and then the drumsticks and then the bobblehead. And there's like a whole package of it all together for yeah. one band. Yeah. It's all, it's all together. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he reminded me of a realtor we used to work with, Jamie Keller. So we're at a George Strait concert. And uh, George was playing in the round at Robert Stadium. And uh, so Jamie, crazy George Strait fan. You remember that? Man? Yes, I do. She was just, uh, George, George was it. So, George, concert's over. We're all we're all leaving. I'm I'm starting to walk up the steps. If you remember how Robert Stadium's laid out, you know. Just walk. And uh, I just happened to look at the floor, and there's Jamie down by the stage, and she's trying to get a get the the attention of one of his roadies, and and she gets his attention, and she po she's pointing at something up there. I thought she's trying to get like a guitar pick or something. She wanted the water cup that George it still had water in. That George had, had been drinking out of it, and I so have, I have a few beer cans from uh, from artists. So, <laughs> any, so anyway, uh, you remember what Robert Stadium? It, it'd be packed up there at the top, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, because you had that that hallway went around. Here comes Jamie. She, be, clear the way, clear the way, and she's holding this damn water cup up like this, the Holy Grail. Yeah. Above wow. her. <laughs> and she went, she went home, and she's got the cup in her china cabinet. With water still in it. No, not what no. No, she wanted to make sure the water didn't evaporate. She froze the water. That doesn't oh, surprise me about her one that's, bit. That's a fan. Yeah. That's a, really a fan. I but, haven't done that much. I've gotten the beer, I've gotten like the beer bottles and stuff off the stage from like Zach Wilde, Ozzy's guitarist, and and other bands along the ways like that. Uh, I was on stage with all American Rejects, got a beer from them. That was a whole cool video I could show you later. I was in front of like 15,000 people. They were opening for Blink-182, and I got pulled up on stage at the Ruoff Amphitheater up in Indianapolis. Crazy story. Uh, I got the beer can from that one. I have so many memorabilia and beer cans and everything and posters and so much from all kinds of concerts throughout my life. You know, for those that thought they were going to hear a real estate show today, I guess we should, we better, might, might ought to oh, get that's that. Oh, we still, got ten, we still got 10 minutes to talk real estate. Okay. We got 10 minutes still. <laughs> David, what's going on in the market? Hey, folks, uh, we talked about it last week. I'm saying it again today. Rates are improving. We're going to continue to improve. So the best thing I can tell you is reach out. Get pre-approved. If you're in the market, if you're renting, we talked last week off there. Uh, renters need to be homeowners. Um, you build equity. You know, we gave stats, 40% uh, greater net worth to homeowners versus renters. Uh, I chuckle and we told a story. If you're, you know, life throws you a curveball, you're renting, you got 30 days, stuff's selling the street. You own a home, got six, seven months for a mortgage company, can even start doing anything. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to be a homeowner. Yeah. So, and, and, and you know, I, 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 I reposted this meme the other day. I posted a few, a couple years ago where... It's that cat, you know, that's and the lady that are always arguing, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I, I and, saw. Yeah, I and saw. She, nothing. And uh, she says, "I'm not. I'm not paying seven percent interest for a home." He said, and the cat goes, "You're paying hundred percent interest. Hundred percent on, 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 on your rent. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No equity. Hundred percent interest. So, folks, you definitely uh, rates are improving, market improving. We what we all need is more homes on the market. So, mm -hmm. if you're thinking about selling your home. Give this Charlie Butler team a call. I think Charlie, you'll buy their house from we, them. We, if, if we can't, if we will have a cash offer for you from us or one of our, our one of our investors we work with within forty eight hours. Excellent. So there so, you go. Uh, cash offer for your home, and uh, um, there's really not any major stipulations at all. I mean, we we don't buy them if they're on fire or something like that. But, you know, <laughs> they're horrible Mindy's houses. Again, but, you know, rude. No. <laughs> uh, Mindy's, uh, rude. Really on your houses today, uh, aren't they? The, well, that's funny. I've been selling these for years, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, speak, um, David, how can I get a hold of you? Folks, as we say each week, the easiest way to get a hold of me is cell phone. You can call, you can text. It's 270-222-0676. You can look up churchillmortgage.com. You'll see the branch that I'm over, which covers Indiana and Kentucky, but it's listed Kentucky, and uh, my cell phone's right there on the branch. So, David Crow, 270-222-0676. And, um, Candace, so how, you know, we've t we talked 
a couple of weeks ago about the new buyer's agency form. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. the, that has to be signed. And folks, this is we didn't. This was not our idea. Okay, <laughs> it was uh, we, not. we have to, we have to have this signed before we show you a house. It's mm-hmm. a, it's the law now. So, uh, how's it going with that? You know, I think that it's going okay. I think the key is, and I've said this from the start. Um, you know, you are going to have buyers that it is. It's difficult for them to come up with that additional yes. money. Um, there are ways around that, uh, David. I know you know you can probably help as on the financing side. As far Amen. As- and I help realtors. I mm-hmm. help buyers. I help everybody understand all the different pathways to help get this accomplished and get them into a home. Yes. Yes. If the seller's agent is not offering a co-brokering fee, now my approach to this is. Um, I, I really <clears throat> want to educate my sellers on how much easier it is going to be and how much of a, a broader market we're going to reach by offering a, a compensation to a buyer's agent. Um, because, you know, if if there's not, if there might be um, buyers that once they find out, oh, wait, they're not offering a broker's fee and I'm going to have to pay that. Well, I'm going to move on from that house. Um, so you're missing a, a range of people that may not be able to afford that no, additional no, no, money. 90% were the last stat I saw 90% of the time, Candace, uh, a buyer's, a buyer's agent sells the home. Right. Right. It, it, I think it's seven and nine percent that of the time that a listing agent actually is also who brings the buyer. Yeah. So, um, I think educating. It's actually been going up, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, from, you know, or yeah. the, the buyer's agents are bringing more now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really do think that, you know, um, educating the sellers on how many people we could possibly be excluding that would show interest in their house is really important. And that's what I've done. And um, all of the sellers that I have broken this down to, they have they've completely understood. And they've said, oh, no, I want to offer, you know, right. I, I want to do that. Um, now, what I... The way I'm also, you know, explaining things is whenever I go in to list a house, that commission, that is commission that I'm charging. Right. I just want to be able to charge a certain amount so that I can take a portion of that and I can pay it to buyer's agents. It's another tool to help me market a house better um, for the sellers. So that's, you know, usually whenever it's explained. And I I think that um, we're probably going to find some maybe some agents that they say, oh, no, you you only have to, you know, I'll list your house for this minimal amount. And I hope that those agents also explain, you may not see as much traffic and your home may not yeah. move as quickly. Um, because I've even had on some lower, uh, you know, where I, I've offer, offered a discount commission to a seller and I, I split everything down the middle. So if that's a discount, then it's a discount on, you know, that I'm paying to the buyer's agent too. And I've had some buyer's agents that have moved on. Technically, they're not supposed to. But when they say, oh, no, not for 2%, we're going with this one, you know, it's, it's that could happen. So I think it's very important that we educate our sellers on that. And that's what I'm doing. And, and we, Jordan, we, we messed around way too long, so... Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I want to move on to Mindy real quick because there was a, a subject that I wanted to go over. Mindy, we kid about your foreclosures and um, and things like that. But many of these people who you'll go there and they say, well, we didn't know. Mm-hmm. They knew, They, I mean, in most cases, well, they, I think almost all, every time they knew, uh, except once in a while their wife hides it from them or well, husband. Yeah, that has yeah. happened. But, um, but, uh, I mean, but besides that, they know... There's things that they can do to avoid foreclosure, isn't there? I mean, there always is. You know, the the way the process is, and I'm also licensed in Kentucky, and what I love about Kentucky is they stick it right on your front door. Like, there's no question. Hey. The sticker is there. The sticker is there. Yes. Um, you know, but, you know, like David said earlier, it's going to be a process. So if you miss one payment, they're not going to automatically come and take your house from you. The hardest thing for people to understand is you have to make those phone calls and talk to your mortgage company because overall, as we've said before, the bank doesn't want your house back. They are more than willing to sit down with you, work out a payment plan. Um, my personal mortgage company, 
I found out, well, like, because we were a day late one time, they will automatically send you all this paperwork. Mm -hmm. Do you need a short sale? Do you need a short sale? Do you need a modification? Do right, you need, something. They will, um, yes. Yes. So they are more than willing to work with you. You just have to, I think we were talking about this in a previous show, you just have to get a little vulnerable and talk to them about your financial situation. I have a question about that. I've heard a rumor that depending on certain You're not mortgage places, foreclosed on. All right. No, 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 no. We're going to lift your house. No, no, no. So, no, 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 no. So, I've heard a rumor that some mortgage places is, would actually give you like a month to where you don't have to pay. Kind of like a, hey, I, I'm, I'm kind of hurting right now. I can I have like a month a freebie. off? Like a freebie month every like one year. I've heard, like I said, this is a rumor. I don't know how much is true. That's why I wanted to throw this. I've actually been wanting to throw this question to you guys because I didn't know how much truth is behind that. Can I answer? Yeah, because yes. I haven't heard Okay, that. I can actually, and I, I didn't know this. I did a loan for a family a year ago, and rates are coming down now, so they're thinking about refinancing, which mm -hmm. was the expectation we set. Unknowing to me, three months into living in the home, her husband had a little setback at work. They contacted us, because I'm not involved in that conversation, and we did a modification for them, which actually she shared with me one month. She paid a uh, thousand less. It's a, it a very expensive home. Yeah, a thousand less less on the mortgage payment, and was working with her and her husband as they were getting back on the feet. So. Uh, they didn't give a full month to my knowledge, but she was asking, is this going to hurt when we go to refinance? And she never missed a payment. Yeah. But we we did a modification, and they again, they lived there three months when this happened, and she just shared that this conversation just took place in the last two weeks. Yeah, the rumor I heard was like you can have like a month forgiveness or something, and then it'll be tacked on at the end of exactly. your mortgage kind Mindy of thing. Exactly. Mindy would just, uh, she's correct. Mortgage companies, banks don't want your home. It's a, they, li yeah. it's a liability. It's a liability. They don't make money when they take costs, that back and resell and do all that. So I think the, the, the spectrum is open on what a bank or mortgage lender would be willing to do with a client to help them through a rough spot to get them on their feet so that they continue to come back and make it. And yes, you did make a statement that I know is accurate. They're going to add, you don't get a freebie. Yeah, it's no, you, added back on it's the adding principal on due, yes, yes. but it helps people through a rough patch in life. Yes. Not all landlords do that to the renters. No. <laughs> no, no, no. no, in fact, I don't think many do. And in, in fact, and even sometimes if you have a, a problem, say, and I've seen this too, you just can't pay. Yeah. And But you, if you contact them, they put those payments on the back end. Yes, they will work. It's, that's why I said the spectrum's open yeah. on so many every if you talk, As long as you talk to them. Mindy said it best earlier. Yeah, you you make that phone call, and uh, you've got to let them yeah. know. And it's okay. And, they're again, they're going to – they are not – wanting to find out something bad's happened to you and they think they're going to swoop in and take your home and yeah. make all this money. Right. No, they'll be like, okay, hate it, life happened, what can we do? And they're going to work with you through a rough patch. I had so. someone actually come to me, a friend of mine, and she was going through some financial stuff and she was like, hey, I'm behind on my mortgage. Like, what's the first thing to do? I said, well, have you called them? No. Okay, try that. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, you know, kind of help, helped work through that yep. with her. And a month or so later, she came to me. She's like, oh, my gosh, they helped me out. I said, good for you. Yeah. Like, they're willing to help you. They, you just got to make that initial phone call. Mindy, I know you and I have both been in these homes where we tell them that they got a whole stack of letters there from, from the mortgage company. Mm -hmm. Yes. Haven't opened any of them. Yeah, yeah. none you know, of them. All they had to do was all they did, call that number that they gave. But I mean, I've been in those houses where there's a whole stack, and then there's all their bank statements and everything else. Yeah. We're running out of time. David. What's the best way to get a hold of your church home mortgage? Folks, call me, get pre-approved, or call me for a refinance, 270-222-0676. Mindy, I know you work with people that do run into a rough patch to help them out, and uh, uh, because no, it's no fun actually foreclosing on somebody and throwing no, them out. No, it's not. So how can they get a hold of you? 812-483-1309. Candace, I really don't know what you do, but you know, <laughs> no, Candace, Candace is, is there's, I don't know of anybody better with the buyers and sellers out there. She is so conscientious with them. Give her a call because you will not be sorry. Candace, how can they get a hold of you? They can reach me on my cell at 812-455-6338, or they can call the team phone at 812-430-1708.
And Charlie Butler, if you um, we can if we can't sell your house, we'll buy it. We'll have you an offer within forty eight hours. Brought to you today by Bossy Title and Churchill Mortgage. Call those fine folks as David is giving you the number and call Bossy Title. They do a great job in the title work. So for Candace DeArm and Mindy Woodward, David Crow, this is Charlie Butler. Have a great Sunday. You've got real estate questions but don't know where to get the answers? Tune in here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as Charlie Butler, Evansville's own real estate expert, shares the latest news, info, and insider tips to help you make smart real estate decisions. Find him online at charliebutlerteam.com. This program has been paid for by the Charlie Butler team. From the Kate Foppel Ford Studios, this is News Talk 1280 WGBF.